I determined that the chain locker bulkhead needs to be moved aft five and a half inches, which is a good compromise to keep the V-berth long enough to sleep in and the chain locker large enough to hold at least 150 feet of chain plus nylon road. You can see that it's quite small as it is now. This bulkhead was held in by some bolts going through that fiberglass tabbing rather than glassing the bulkhead to the hull. We removed the carpet on the hull up here and started removing the glue with uh, heat gun and scrapers. We've pulled out this plastic water tank from under the V-berth to replace it with the integral tank built into the hull. This is supposedly an 18 gallon tank which is much smaller than needed. Here we've got the V-berth panels removed. We're going to build an integral water tank here into the hull so that the hull itself becomes the two sides of the tank. I'm using Divini cell rather than plywood this time to ensure it can't rot. Advantages of an integral tank are that it's the most space efficient tank, maximizes the capacity, you can make it exactly the size you want, it adds strength to the hull for collision protection, and there are no hidden or inaccessible spaces under and around the tank, and it's easily cleaned through the inspection port. Putting in a flexible tank would be easier, but I found the cheaper ones from Plastimo are prone to leaking and hard to clean, although they can be a good second best option if you use the expensive tanks by Nauta or Vitas. We're going to begin by replacing the chain locker bulkhead and moving it aft to keep the anchor chain weight further aft and lower. We've got the chain locker bulkhead in and the door made for it. There's a rubber gasket around the edge here to seal it. And up here there's a eye strap that holds it open. For cutting fiberglass panels when you can't get a jigsaw in maybe, this uh, high-speed oscillating tools work okay if you have a good quality blade on it. Most of the blades are no good. But even that's kind of slow. So if you have some heavy long cuts to make, I either use the metal cutting disc on a four and a half inch angle grinder, which cuts wickedly fast, but it's very dusty when it cuts, throws dust everywhere. Another option we sometimes use is a sawzall. If you can safely get the blade in without cutting the hole. Not very fast though, and it fiberglass eats up blades. too bad, still kind of slow, and the angle grinder is the fast way. Alright, I've grinded the surfaces, and what's left of that white color is gel coat, not paint, so it's alright. And I've drawn the line for where we want the water tank to go. Now a tank of this size, which is about 
29 inches fore and aft and 17 inches vertically high at the aft end and about 11 inches high at the forward end and here that comes out to about 50 inches wide at the top aft and 28 inches wide at the top. So a tank of this size is going to come out to about 45 gallons and just because it will hold 45 gallons doesn't mean you have to fill it that much if you don't want to carry all that weight forward all the time. Only fill it when it's needed. Also you don't want to put the tank any further forward or higher than you need to. So in this case we've still got another buoyancy chamber forward of the tank for a few feet before the chain locker. And then with cardboard and masking tape make patterns of the two vertical bulkheads for the water tank. So this is half inch Divini cell foam sheet and if the piece isn't long enough you can cut and glue the piece on the end and then you can cut it with a jigsaw with a narrow blade easily or even a razor knife and then you can shape it with a belt sander or any tools that work on wood. We're going to start by putting a layer of fiberglass on each side. This is, I believe, 1708 fiberglass. It's a cloth on one side with mat on the other. And then once we get that on there, we'll see if it feels stiff enough. Should be. Got a short nap, one quarter inch mohair roller here. After two layers of fiberglass, this comes out to be just under 5 eighths inch thick and it's plenty stiff, at least as stiff as a piece of plywood that size. And I use the angle grinder with this 36 grit flap disc to shape it and just knock the roughness off the top so I can put more fiberglass on it when it goes in rather than using these flap discs which tend to bounce around a lot. I had to cut an access hatch into the cabin sole here so that we could reach the other side of that bulkhead to install the water outlet and the chain locker drain hose. I set these panels in place with a few number 8 screws just set into the hull about a quarter inch deep to hold it in place while we fiberglass. Then I've cut this PVC tube to lay down inside there and I'll run a chain locker drain hose through that. I've got these glassed in with 4 inch and 6 inch fiberglass tape on all sides. I like to use this 5 inch sander grinder variable speed with a hook and loop 60 grit pad on the end. And this way I can shape and smooth out the fiberglass, get it ready for the next layers. The downside is you can only use it for about 15 minutes because it builds up a lot of heat and you've got to let it cool down. The cutting pattern for the top of the tank out of cardboard and I've got the inspection plate here. I want to check that I can reach inside all four corners and there is the baffles already cut ready for fiberglassing. Those are 3 8 inch 
Divini cell instead of the half inch we use uh, for the outside. And here you can see where I've cut down in the center so that you can get your hand in there. And down here we have cutouts at the bottom for flow through. The idea is to let the water flow into the different chambers but to slow it down so it's not sloshing noisily. I've glassed an extra layer of 3 8 inch Divini cell on top here just around the deck access plate cutout and that allows easier access to reach in with your hand around the baffles and raised up it lets you fill the tank fully and also the Divini cell doesn't hold screws at all so it relies on the fiberglass layers. We've got an extra layer of fiberglass for the screws to get into. Everything is now dry fit ready for the epoxy tank coating inside. We've got the chain locker drain hole down there, the half inch water outlet, and 5A site tube fittings there. These are just dry fit temporarily. Take them out for putting on the epoxy coat and then install them with some caulking. That's a 5 8 tank vent that's going to go through the bulkhead up there and up overhead in the chain locker. This is what I'm using for the final water tank coating inside. It's Devo Bar Rust 233H and comes in a one gallon kit. That's 0 0.8 gallons of resin and 0.2 of hardener. Mix it four to one. I found a one quarter inch nap mohair roller works best. Bar rust is thick and sticky so you need to roll it out well. I used just under one quart for the first coat and a bit less for the second coat. The one gallon kit's enough for two tanks or you can use leftover to paint the bilge or lockers. The bottom of the lid is coated outside the boat to install later because it's not possible to get the tank coated later through the small access hole once it's fiberglassed in. Does it need to be said, don't build any cabinetry panels that are too big to fit through your hatch. All the fittings are in place and tank coated and ready to seal it down with thickened epoxy under the joints and fiberglass along the hull there. Fiberglass down the top sides and put thickened epoxy under all the other joints and we'll fiberglass those later. I'm building up the framing and the tops to the V-berth bunk which is going to be all the way across here with no separate walkthrough area. The Holding waste tank will go here, and these will all be made watertight lockers, a storage locker, and this is a shallow locker on top of the water tank. And you might ask, why not bring the top of the tank right up to the bunk level to save the trouble of building a shallow locker on top? And first it makes the height of the water too high and you have more water sloshing around up high and if that inspection port ever leaks it would go all over the bunk and here it would be contained. It was easier to paint the bottoms of these V-berth boards before fiberglassing them down. Okay, I've got all the plumbing attached and the chain locker drain run through the tank vent is going up into the chain locker overhead. We put the 6 inch Bexon deck plate on with butyl and those are the only 
deck plates I found that don't leak. I've also filled the tank and marked the sight tube and it takes, I found, exactly 45 gallons. And this cover board will be put down with sealant and that's where access will be to the tank outlet. Normally you don't need to go to that but you can run a knife blade along that caulking to pull that up if needed. Even though these V-berth lockers are above the waterline, to make the lids more watertight I'm installing rubber gasket along the each edge and so after I cut them out I applied this black super weather strip adhesive from 3M on each surface and then once it tacks up push it down on there and then that will hold it otherwise if you use a self adhesive on these it'll eventually come off I use whatever good quality closed cell foam weather stripping I could find and it's between 3 sixteenths and a quarter inch thick by 3 quarter inch wide and it doesn't matter if it's self-adhesive or not since as I said you're gonna use gasket cement to make it stronger This is a similar Divini Cell integral water tank and V berth rebuild on another boat. This one is a Hallberg Rossi Monson 31. And to save some labor on building all the hatches, we've installed hatches already made. And it costs a little more in materials but did save a lot of time. And so there is the top of the water tank. And the small locker forward has got a Bexon 8-inch deck access plate. 